So what I said at the beginning of the stream that I that no one could hear was the um, was the hold on, give me a moment. So what I uh, what I was saying at the beginning of the stream was that this is going to be a little different than E3. We're not going to have trailer, trailer, trailer. We're going to have um, interviews with the developers and the games that probably didn't hear much about during E3. So I expect to see Psychonauts 2 information, probably Hellblade 2 information. We're obviously going to hear about Sea of Thieves um um here we go we're obviously going to hear about sea of thieves and the expansion with uh parts of the caribbean that they're bringing we are going to have um probably about information probably fable information obviously we don't know but this isn't going to be trailer 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 and then um nothing else this is going to be pretty much a developer talking about the games that they have in store coming to game pass and the service so this is also interesting that microsoft is doing this because usually there's not an event after e3 that quickly so this kind of tells us that xbox is trying to stay relevant in the news keep their games in the news so people are aware that they're coming and when they're coming uh so yeah i'm looking forward to this event to get some more information on the games that we saw during e3 again it's not going to be every single game this is going to be specific games and i think it's mostly games that are going to be coming out in the next couple of weeks in the next few weeks so it's going to be interesting to see what they have in store for us Xbox just had their event on Sunday, so today's Thursday, so three days later, pretty much four days later, we are getting more news on upcoming games for Xbox. And that to me is really cool. All right, so we have all that 18 plus. If there is one, all right, here we go. That place in our dreams, Whoa. we can disappear into so choppy. a world. A lot of these are third party titles.
Hello, and welcome to Xbox Game Showcase Extended. I'm your host, Paris Lilly. You may also know me from Gamertag Radio and Kind of Funny. I'm excited to be here with you today. We just saw a recap of Sunday's Xbox Showcase, and wow, 30 games from some of the world's most talented developers, and 27 of those games are coming to you on Xbox Game Pass. We saw the first in-engine footage of Starfield and learned that, yes, Bethesda is bringing it to Xbox, PC, and yep. day one on Game Pass Exclusive. exclusively. They also showed us Battlefield 2042, Sea of Thieves, A Pirate's Life, Stalker 2, Psychonauts 2, and how about Redfall? Like they said, this year, Xbox is all about the games. Today, Xbox Game Showcase Extended is our chance to hear from the developers behind the games that are redefining interactive entertainment. Developers like Double Fine, Playground Games, Supergiant, Rare, 343 Industries, and more. We also have a new accessory design program to share with you and a couple of other cool surprises. That's enough talk. Let's jump right in. Program to share with you. Okay, so we have Forza Horizon 5 again. You can get it! You can see it for yourselves. Forza Horizon 5 looks phenomenal. And here with us today, all the way from the UK, is Mike Brown from Playground Games. Mike, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, great to be here. Now, Mike, Forza Horizon has taken driving fans to Colorado, France, Italy, Australia, and the UK. How did you decide on Mexico for Forza Horizon 5? Yeah, so we knew right from the start that we wanted it to be the largest horizon yet. Um, but it's not far down the path from that that you realize you don't want to go big if it's just going to be more of the same. So we also knew that it needs to be the most contrasting, most diverse open world we'd ever built. And then when you start to look at Mexico, it, it really is like the whole world in one country. It's got snowy peaks, tropical jungles, epic canyons, amazing beaches, beautiful architecture, incredible historic cities, but also modern cities as well. It really has everything. And then you add in the culture, the music, the artwork, the people, the history, and there really is no more exciting location for the Horizon Festival. Now that we're in Mexico, what are some of the authentic elements that we can expect in the game? Yeah, totally. So we've got the largest and most diverse world we've ever built. And as I mentioned just a moment ago, something that really excited us about Mexico is the culture. So we've worked with creatives from all across Mexico. We've had Mexican artists produce beautiful mural artwork that you'll find on the walls around the game. We've worked with Mexican music acts to produce original compositions for the game. We've worked with Mexican scriptwriters and actors so that all of those Mexican voices you hear in the game will sound really authentic. And perhaps not as obvious, uh, but the other thing that is super authentic is uh, all of our light data and skies. So we had a team out in Mexico uh, with our 12K HDR sky capture rig. We captured more than 400 hours of sky data. I was very surprised data, at how good this game looks. And then we recreate looks. that in game. Um, so all of the, the light, the shadows, Something that had actually come out after uh, is that there's actually not going to be ray tracing while you so play. Everything you're seeing there the ray tracing is only going to be available in pretty much that, that photo mode. Of, of reality. So, it's a little misleading, I would lab. say. Now, what can you tell us about that? Yeah, so Event Lab is a, a really exciting uh, new suite of tools that will allow people in the community to create wh whatever they can imagine, really. If we look at the video right now, all of this that we see has been built uh, using that Event Lab tool set. So I'm assuming this is going to be like Forge, so like I said on the, the when the reveal happened, it looks like this is going to be well. Forza so, Horizon Forge, uh, rule which is going to so give you gives, gives a huge and then also in that, flexibility in that on creating levels and games with people. Well, and all of that is adding into a collective team score. Uh, the rules could have easily been set up so that it wasn't a team score, that it was competitive. All of that creative freedom is is, is open to players. It's as, as a game designer, I think it's the feature that I'm most excited about in, in Forza Horizon 5. And I would say as a gamer, it's a feature. Oh, so I guess it's actually it's not Forza. It's, it's going, going to be really like uh, Rocket League. Features between me and my friends. Now, with the power of the Xbox Series X and the S, what are some of the new technical features that we can expect? Hmm. 
So in, in Forza Vista, we're really able to turn up everything, ramp everything on, turn on ray tracing, and we have the cars looking more realistic than they ever have before. Okay, Forza Vista detail. is but like detail, photo mode. It does apply to the rest of the world as well. During the uh, Xbox E3 showcase the other day, I mentioned we'd modeled the detail on everything, right down to the individual needles on the Choya cactus. Uh, that was just the plants that happened to be closest to the camera at that point. Um, that, that level of detail is applied to everything that you see. And thanks to the power of the Xbox Series consoles, it's not just things that are right in front of the camera as well. We've really been able to push out all of the, the LODs and the drawers. And Xbox Series S is pushing for 1080p, if I'm not mistaken. And then, as I mentioned but Xbox earlier, Series you S data from Mexico, should be so uh, 4K 30 frames per second. AO, all of it comes so it's not going to do 60 or 120. Real. It's going to go now, 4K Mike, 30. When can the world expect to play Forza Horizon 5? Sure. So we're launching this holiday on the Xbox Series consoles, the Xbox One consoles. We're on PC, on both the Windows 10 Store and Steam. Of course, we're in Game Pass and Game Pass Ultimate. And you can play us on your Android device with Xbox Cloud Gaming. And players who purchase the premium edition, or if they're a Game Pass subscriber and get the premium add-ons bundle, you'll get early access as well. So you'll be able to play a little bit earlier than everybody else. Now, Mike, this was a huge moment for you and the team. What does this mean to you? Yeah, well, for me personally, I mean, I've been working on the Forza franchise for a really, really long time, but this is my this is my first game as creative director. So in this period over the last few days and, and week or so, as people are seeing it for the first time, for me, it's probably been one of the most exciting experiences of my life. It's been absolutely incredible. Again, Mike, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Later in the show, we'll be hearing from the developers behind games like Age of Empires 4, Shredders, okay. and Grounded. But first, the team at Ninja Theory has something to share with you. Here's to me, Chief Creative Ninja, Hellblade to explain 2. what they've been yep. hard at work on for Hellblade 2. I was 2. expecting to see Hello something everyone, on Hellblade 2. Hello everyone, and welcome to our brand spanking new Ninja House in Cambridge. I wanted to give you an update on the work so far for Senua Saga Hellblade 2. What we're doing right now is building a good chunky slice of the game before we then move into full production to build out the rest. Hellblade was very special for us. So Hellblade 2 is uh, we far didn't away. We wanted to do a straight sequel. We wanted to do something extra special. And so we're making our lives as difficult as possible in that pursuit. The game is set in Iceland, 9th century Iceland. So we've been sending out art and audio teams out there. So if you haven't played he he the first Hellblade, then you have time data to, to play. To large swathes of the landscape. On the character front, we're building real costumes scanning them in. We're collaborating with Epic Games to bring you next generation digital characters. On the combat front, we want it to be extra real and brutal. And so Melina, our main actress, has been training for two years and all of our wow. animators have undergone combat training. And so what you're going to see here is not a trailer, it's not a gameplay reveal, but rather a montage of the kind of work we've been up to. Hope you like it. That's cool. Follow me on this journey by sea, by land, and dreams through the valleys of despair, over the mountains of rage, to the depth of fear in my mind. You might see me as weak, but I will show you what lies behind my eyes. With our sword, we will forge new stories to strike the gods that haunt us. We will embrace our suffering. Soothe our scars of grief and break their siege of our minds. They may see them as gods. Okay, so I played part of the first 
Hellblade, I didn't play the whole thing. And from what I played, it was it was good. It was interesting. I mean, the little bit I played, well, no, I didn't play a little bit. I played like halfway through the game. It felt a little bit repetitive, but I I got the I understood why people like the game. But it wasn't to me like like control. Control when I played it, the moment I started playing it, the story, the gameplay, everything just like grabbed me and I was like I gotta finish this game. That wasn't against me help it and I thought it would be because I have heard so many good things about the game. Uh, so I'm hoping I'm, I'm gonna get back into it because I'm done with control. I was playing Call of Duty for a little bit. I, I kinda got into Call of Duty again after years of not playing it. So I'm going to get back into Hellblade because I would like to finish this game before that game before the next one comes out. But now that I know that it's still in early development, I know that I have a couple of years to go on that game. So if you were having me to try out Hellblade, you have a couple of years to go to play that game. And that is Xbox Design Lab. And here to tell us more about Xbox Design Lab is Naveen Kumar. Okay, so we were told there was going to be an update on so Xbox Design Xbox Lab, Lab, so Lab we'll see what the updates are now. Customization service on Xbox.com, where you can choose nearly any color combination you want for your controller and really make it yours. Uh, you can design a controller based off your favorite video game character, your favorite sports team, or whatever inspires you. And you can think of Design Lab as your own personal design studio. Now, we've originally launched Design Lab uh, five years ago and have since sold millions of controllers to fans around the world. But then we had to take a pause as we brought up our latest generation of Xbox hardware. Yeah. But now we're back offering customization on the latest generation Xbox hardware. Yeah, they went controller. offline for now, a few months so there because awesome they were working on right upgrading kind of the service. Yeah, well, right off the bat, you can see there's tons of color options to choose from. For most of the parts on the controller, I wish it had, uh, you can choose I mean, I know the customization is crazy, but I wish the they had more customization. Uh, three of those colors are brand new to Design Lab. We have shock blue, like if you could red, do, my uh, personal favorite, the electric volt color. Most of the colors uh, include iridescent colors, or so if you could make it shiny, of things, up, things like, like that. Automotive headlights, uh, recycled water bottle jugs, uh, things that make the controller more eco-friendly. We also have new button options for the ABXY button set and the view menu share, including a really cool button option uh, for ABXY that's a throwback to the original Xbox 360 controller. So you got to check that out. And um, yeah, this is just the beginning. We're excited to, to introduce more customization options over time. Now, two of these controllers were inspired by games. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so there's a, a blue and green and purple one that's inspired by Psychonauts 2. We just love the key art for that one, so we work with our partners uh, to develop a controller to help bring that to life. And there's also that. one that's inspired uh, by Grounded and the aphid character from that game. Uh, we had a lot of fun in designing that as well, as a controller kind of looks like an aphid if you look at it yeah. uh, from the right angles. Now, I created my own controller. <clears throat> I'm going to pick it up now. I'm a huge Los Angeles Lakers fan world champion Los Angeles <laughs> Lakers and my design was inspired by that so I went with the oh, yellow that's cool. on the front I went with the purple on the back um, I designed the buttons kind of with the black accent so but LeBron the, didn't uh, deliver the and and, and the out of the playoffs um, but I also did an inscription on it and my inscription well, team was says Ka can't so. cook and that is inspired by my good friend Khalif Adams he does a fantastic show called I'll Spawn on that, Me, um, but he's a terrible cook. I'll so give him that I pass. I want to make sure that every time I pick up a controller to play on Xbox, I'm reminded how terrible of a cook he is and to avoid it at all costs. <laughs> but enough of terrible <laughs> cooking. Let's talk about something that you designed. Yeah, I designed this controller right in front of me here. Uh, again, on my favorite color, this electric volt. I just love the way uh, that the midnight blue accents pop against it the dark ABXY colors. Uh, and this one's inspired by a pair of sneakers I have at home. So I had to make a controller based on yeah, that. That's awesome. Now, one last thing. When can fans expect to start designing their own Xbox controllers? They can start today by visiting xbox.com slash Xbox Back online. So if you've been waiting to, to from, make uh, your own controller, really and we're Xbox to US, Design Canada, Lab is back online. European countries. And uh, these make great gifts, whether it's for yourself or that special gamer in your life. That is fantastic. Naveen, I personally like so my white here. Thanks, controller. Fans. Later in the show, very simple. World's Edge. Like we'll white a deeper look color buttons. And yes, but first, it's always handy. Tim just Schaefer in case. is giving us a closer look at Psychonauts 2. 
Hi everybody, I'm Tim Schaefer from Double Fine Productions here today to take a deeper look into Psychonauts 2. Psychonauts 2 is an action-adventure game starring Rasputin Aquato, a powerful young psychic, also a trained acrobat, who ran away from his circus home to join the Psychonauts and expand and explore his psychic abilities. One of Raz's most important psychic abilities is that of astral projection, which allows him to project his psyche into someone else's mind and see their mental landscape made real. He can help them. See, I know this game has been around forever, but I had no clue that I was the story which means of Psychonauts. The levels in the game are actually brains, and Psychonauts 2 has even more brains than the first game. One of the first brains you'll get to visit is that of Caligosto Lobato. Now, Dr. Lobato was actually a villain in the first game, but after Raz fought him, they kind of became friends. He actually has a piece of information that Raz wants, which is who kidnapped Truman Zanotto. And Dr. Lobato wants to tell you, but he can't because of something going on deep in his unconscious mind. So Raz has to travel along with Sasha and Mia and Coach Oleander into his mind and try to extract that information. And there's a lot of forces at work inside Lobato's mind, maybe put there by someone else, who are trying to stop you, including some of uh, the enemies that you might recognize from the first Psychonauts game, including the sensors, entities designed to stamp out thoughts that don't belong in someone's mind, including Raz, who doesn't belong here. They also see a lot of new enemies, such as doubts. Maybe regrets. he shouldn't assume Lobato's that people have actually played this game before. Very dangerous for Raz. Just, uh, Did I mention there's a lot of thought. Teeth? Have I mentioned that? Should a lot of teeth? no one has teeth. played this game. He's an amateur dentist. He doesn't know a lot about teeth, but he really, really likes them. Luckily, to fight all these enemies, Raz will have his psychic powers, including his powerful psychic punch, where he has his hands that extend psychically from his body into a powerful melee combo. He also has his psychic blast, where he can shoot a powerful energy beam out of his brain. Raz also has the ability of pyrokinesis. It's always handy to be able to burn things with your mind. To give an idea, Psychonauts came out in 2005. This is a 16-year-old sequel waiting to happen. To All right. Really so, so again, this guy Raz should not expect that people know what he's talking about. 16-year-old game. Now, while Truman's been kidnapped, the person running the Psychonauts is Hulse Forsyth the second head of the Psychonauts. Hollis is also the head of the intern program, which is what Raz has joined now that he's become part of the Psychonauts. And he is invited into Hollis's brain for instruction. Hollis is teaching him a new psychic ability called mental connection, where you can see two thoughts in someone's mind and connect them, sometimes creating new thoughts, making new things happen. While Raz is training in mental connection inside of Hollis's mental classroom, he experiments a little too far and accidentally, maybe slightly on purpose, creates a lot of interest in gambling inside of Hollis's mind because he wants to go on the mission to the Lady Electopus Casino. Unfortunately, this connection leads to more connections and eventually the whole thing gets out of Raz's control and Hollis gets way too interested in gambling. And uh, Raz has to go back into her mind where he finds out that her memories of medical school and where she studied neurology have been corrupted by this gambling interest and it becomes a casino hospital. And Raz has to actually go in there and engage with all these gambling machines in order to shut it down and return Hollis's mind back to normal. And she's gonna be, she's gonna be really mad. Inside Hollis's mind, you'll see bigger, tougher sensors that have turned into bouncers inside the casino. And also a new enemy called Bad Idea. Bad Ideas uh, spawn- Yes, yeah, so you, you didn't know this game will be on Game Pass on day one. So if you have Game Pass, never play Psychonauts before, now, headquarters. this will be the time for you to too, this most play Psychonauts that he gets to visit the headquarters of the Psychonauts free. themselves, which is called the Mother Lobe. This is the center for all Psychonauts activity, and Raz gets to see his old friend Sasha and Mia, who were counselors at summer camp in the first game. He now gets to see where they work. He gets to see their offices, he gets to see their labs, he gets to see their co-workers, other agents in the field, but also he gets to see the admin and maintenance staff as they go about their business and hang out in the cafeteria, and sort of the everyday happenings of uh, what life, what appears to be normal in the Psychonauts world. There are a lot of little hidden pathways and treasures around the base that he can find, side quests and scavenger hunts and things that you might recognize from the first game. There's a lot of characters to meet, a lot of fun things to discover, a lot of secrets about the Psychonauts themselves, and the lore of the founding of the Psychonauts, including the Psychic Six, who were seen on stumps around the campfire in the first game, but now we get to go much deeper into the story of how they played a part in the founding of the Psychonauts, um, how they were brought together and recruited by So I guess you kind of have to play the first game in order to uh, understand a lot of the callbacks well, so on this game, exploring this natural environment which again, it is weird because a 16-year-old game. So to expect the people so in the second game we've are up to date with the lore of the game is asking a little too much for people, I think. There's a quarry 
outside the mother lobe, which is where they dug out these massive deposits of titanium. Titanium, this psychoreactive mineral that amplifies and, and changes psychic powers. There's lots of secrets around the quarry, lots of abandoned mines and caves and things to explore. And next door to the quarry is an abandoned roadside attraction called the Questionable. And the reason area, why that it takes 16 years for a sequel to materialize for this game is because the first game wasn't a smash hit. It was actually a cold thing that people like. The game wasn't. I think the game got really good reviews, but people didn't really buy it. And I think it's probably because of the marketing at the time. I don't think the game really it was explained what the game was about. His family has and so it didn't sell as well. In the and so the reason why they're finally making a sequel is because father, Xbox has given the money and be for it to happen. And, and because there's enough people asking for the game to happen, I guess, that is feasible. But also because of Game Pass content, right? You have more games for people to play on your service. So why not? Raz is so afraid of water because of the curse put on his family that every time he comes near water... And I guess also if you do a good job of marketing this game and selling this game, under, you could become a hit and then you head. could do a remaster version. I think there's a remaster version of Psychonauts the out there. Where came so I guess you can do a remaster version and sell the, the old Psychonauts again and do all this. Yeah, so if you hadn't, if you didn't know about Psychonauts, that's his story behind it. So there's a lot of mystery to discover for the player and Raz and his family and his friends as they explore the connections between his family and the Psychonauts and what it all has to do with Maligula. Maligula is a, one of the first villains the Psychonauts ever fought. She's a powerful psychic and she's a mass murderer and she's been believed to be dead for many years. But there's a lot of unknown things going on behind the scenes and a lot of mysteries and a lot of uh, plots for the player to uncover. Could it be 16 So that's it. Thanks for taking this deeper look into Psychonauts 2 with me. The game is coming out August 25th and you can pre-order now. So I'll stop talking so you can go and do that. Thanks for watching. <laughs>
where they're placed, what's happening with the creatures, what's happening with your health kits, your perks, all those systems are driven off of that. And so what that means is, as you're playing, not only do you have those, hey, this last time we played this, there was nothing here, and this time we're being overwhelmed. Yeah. And then you also have those peaks and valleys so that you have some downtime and then you have some really big uptime in it, or you know, a lot of combat happening in it. We're also monitoring how the people are playing. So if you're first time playing and your team isn't doing very well, We'll put it's gonna right on the be uh, left for them. dead. And if you don't find them, for, left for dead, yeah. We'll, we'll That's spawn what a it was. more later. But if you're really good, if you're really killing it, well, we might not put anything on the main path. And so, if you want to go find your perks, or if you want to go find new weapons, so left for dead used kind of the same we'll system. Left for dead, I think, I'm talking about really the right game, which is the zombie game say, that now is style. Double the health of all the enemies. And then we do something of we actually look from session to session as well. So if you play with the same friends every week, and you guys have been killing it for ten weeks in a row. Well, let's mix it up for you. Let's just throw something crazy at you that you've never seen before. Yeah, Left 4 Dead. Aliens. We can do that so Left 4 Dead had the same system where the AI controlled the zombies, you know, really how many zombies you got at once, depending on you know, you how well the team you were playing it's, with it's was, to, to how your well your you played right. exactly. before. So, yeah, that's so the now, AI will use all that information to control so for the perks, how challenging the game was and with, how well, a busy and then, you know, the game will be with friends, the zombies. Well, I'm going to be support. You're so it looks like this is going to be the same concept. Like, we, we I guess it's like a Left 4 Dead, but with aliens playing. instead of zombies. So you huh? mm. so that every time you're playing, you're also kind of choosing your role based on the perks you're getting. So perks come in this thing called the Mata Compiler. And you have to go find the Mata Compilers in the world. And once you find one, they'll have from one to three perks to choose from. And then over time, you're essentially building a deck for your for your character. And so you might have it where if you saw in the trailer, there's a pulse, which is kind of like a, a melee shove. Well, you can invest into that and you can have one that you can now recharge your pulse faster. And now it protects your uh, other players around you. And then it gets more powerful and you can actually do damage with it. So all of a sudden you went from being a support character playing in the back to leading the charge going forward and knocking yeah. down aliens and everyone else blasting them. Or you'll get a bunch of perks that are about um, investing in one weapon and making it where you do headshots that actually does damage to other aliens around. So now you're the sniper hanging back. And so it's really mixing up that kind of experience that you're having. And you'll earn these perks as you play. So the more you play, the more perks you have. But since we want the game to always be great to play with your friends, if you've, if you've been playing, you know, I'll say you play with me. I've been playing 400 hours. You're brand new. Yeah. Well, we share the perks. So you get all the perks that I have available to me as well. So that way you yeah. could have that experience of all that crazy oh, right. cool. in your game as well. Because it's all about having that's fun a really with your good idea. Like the shared experience with your friends. Mm -hmm. Now we kind of already talked about the inspirations, like like two thousand. I looked at that and it was like two thousand one Space Odyssey was the first thing I thought of. But let's talk more about the enemies in the game. What what was some of the inspirations for that? So the enemies um, is we kind of look at it of how we want the players to behave as well as feel. And so we bring in outside playtesters every week. They play our game, we watch them, and what we'd see is really good teams would stick together really tightly. And even if we send something like the brood at them that spreads them apart, they'd quickly form back together. So we created something called the spawner. Yeah. And this is a good example of kind of how we approach the design. The spawner, you hear off the distance, and you'll hear it, and you know what it's doing. It's spawning things. It yeah. spawns these little turrets that come at you. They're not the worst thing, but they're going to be unrelenting until you Dude, kill this the is just like Left and so 4 Dead. Left 4 Dead or the second Left 4 Dead. It down, was just like this. Over there. I'm not sticking with my team. I'm going to go hunt that thing down. I'm going to go kill it. So you go run off, you kill it, you're feeling good about it. And all of a sudden you realize, wait, where are my teammates? I'm all alone. There's other specials here. Oh, I'm in trouble. And it's trying to create those kind of moments where it's mixing it up, where you always want to have it where it kind of almost takes turns of one player's the last one surviving, they're the last one up and they're helping everybody else up and get it going. And so really looking at having those enemies give you those moments for how it affects the players. Bonus question for you. What does the anacrusis actually mean? So anacrusis is a musical term. It means the, the notes before the song, the little, the little kind of intro. And for this, we have a character Boris that you never meet. <laughs> Um, and the, all the parallels just talk about it because I thought it was fun to have this character that you never really are sure who they are because it's everyone else describing it. And she um, named the barge that you're on, that you're launching these missions, the Anacrusis. And her thought there was, this is not the main event. This is not us against the aliens with fighter pilots and everything else. This is just regular people. This is the pre-battle to the battle. This is finding out about these aliens and what just happened. 
So is there going to be an end game to this, or is it just going to be endless multiplayer? What I'm wondering. Chet, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. We've got so much more coming. It looks interesting. I'm finally. I'm glad that we finally know more about the Anacrusis because. I illusion it was a silent roll, when they went Ubisoft was just a trailer with a it's coming out like in a couple months trailer for Xbox Infinite. exclusive first, and PC of the course stalker um, one of the most but I mean now we have some information right if, year, if you've played Left 4 Dead at least a second Left 4 Dead this exactly. game is kind of going to be the same, the game. except Let's you're gonna play you're gonna battle aliens instead of zombies but it feels Hi like it's going to be the it's same Zach kind of game. GSC game World. And it, it probably is smaller of um, maps Our game than has a subtitle, Left 4 Dead because Left 4 Dead you're a lot of April in and out, you're in the street and in By the way, buildings, the but this seems like you're going to be in a building the whole time. You're obviously here willing to learn more. So, so here are I'm curious about how the game is going to work. Heart of Chernobyl, you probably didn't know yet. So let's dive a little bit deeper in our trailer. This section of the trailer is a bandit's gunfight on the chemical plant. You can see the actual in-game animations of picking up the weapons and installing modifications on the go. You can see a ray the thing on the is, ground there. you can notice the teaser of a new faction. We are not showing the exact moment right now, because we wonder if you can discover it yourself. You may actually recognize the exact location on the swamps. If you played Stalker Clear Sky, you may remember this place. The time did the job, but the tower is definitely still there. Also in this scene, you can see a brand new detector Skiff is using for the artifact hunt. Because of its form, it's called Gilka, which actually means a branch in the Ukrainian. I've never played the first game, so I don't... I'm not really familiar the with The artifact Skiff is going to collect is called Jelly. But this, this one, game, it Stalker 2, looks stamina. good. So I'm actually Moving waiting to, to the play, that, man to play the game. Before you ask it, yes, there will be a lot of characters with an interesting fate in the zone. His hideout is located in Chernobyl 2. That's a town not so far from Pripet you have seen in the gameplay teaser. <sighs> the campfires, a small isle of safety in the unwelcoming zone, a place where you can finally have a little rest before another foray. You have seen the campfire during the first trailer in the Ruki village. Of course, it wasn't the only one. The zone is full of dangers and mutants. The monsters are the result of the numerous experiments. We're not ready to show you all of them, so let's stick to the old good bloodsucker for now. In this rooftop scene, we are truly proud with the quality of the animations. Oh, that's cool. We made a small behind the scenes video from our motion capture studio. The face I mean, the graphics are really, really good. Makes the final result as close to the reality as possible. The Gauss gun you're seeing in this section is one of the most powerful weapons from the arsenal. That looks really cool. I wonder if we can get up that tower. Moving to the final thing for today, the man at the end of the trailer is Sergei Grigorovich, the creator of the Stalker series. Stalker. Thanks for joining us today. We can't wait for the moment when the time comes to enter the zone on April 28, 
2022. As you just saw, Stalker 2 is shaping up to be something special, and I can't wait to play it next year when it comes to Xbox, PC, and Game Pass on day one. On Sunday, we saw the trailer for A Plague Tale Requiem, the sequel to the award-winning A Plague Tale That was Innocence. a crazy amount of rides. those of you who are fans of the original, we've got some good news for you too. So the first one I didn't play, I only read about it. And what I read mostly was about uh, how the rats look and how you could control the rats in the game. I didn't know that they could make a... That they, that it was popular enough to make a sequel, but I guess it was. And I guess we're going to get a... What is a remastered version or enhanced version, whatever they call these versions nowadays. tell us more about Age of Empires 4 are Adam Eisgreen and Emma Bridal from World's Edge. Thank you both for being Hi. here. Thanks for having, having us on, Paris. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> my, my legacy, Age player, I'm excited for this. Now, you had some news at the briefing. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of talk about that a little more? Well, I mean, fans got to have their first looks at two more of our launch civilizations, um, the Abbasid Dynasty and the French. Yes. Um, and they bring a lot to the table, um, totally different ways to play. But I'm really excited to show them those. And then also, people got to see their first taste of naval gameplay, uh, which we haven't shown off at all, except for a little teaser at the end of Fan Preview. Paying off that tease. And exactly. we also revealed one more of our campaigns, The Hundred Years' War. And uh, Joan of Arc made an appearance. Uh, we also announced that the game so is coming to Age of Empires 4 is... And it's coming to Windows I've Storm, never played it, but I mean, it looks... Now, earlier you mentioned Interesting. The two I guess the it will be a game that you will French. really want to play kind if you go into detail about that. like history um, and stuff yeah, because that's usually um, what they the are Abbasid. based on, so which is Abbasid why it's called Age of Empires. This amazing technological um, powerhouse of a civilization that um, has a really never got around to playing the game to uh, them in Age of Empires 4. It's actually unique uh, across all the civs that are in the game in that they, they construct this bastion of knowledge called the House of Wisdom, and they can keep upgrading it with different wings, and that gives them a host of incredible technologies that leverage their army, their economy, their resources. Um, but beyond even that, they have an incredible amount of fun units, uh, especially camels, uh, unique to the civs again. Uh, the launch civs for Age of Empires IV is camel units, and these camels have amazing uh, abilities to buff the other units in their armies. And so you have these wonderful diverse mixes where you always want to be throwing different units together, but always including camels for the different kinds of buffs and advantages yeah. you can give uh, to, your, to your civilization. It's great. And the French are really, really strong with trade. They've got some great options that are going to make your late game really, really mm -hmm. interesting. They have a landmark called the House of Commerce. And for your units, you're going to really want to focus on knights and lances. Those are your powerhouses. But the French actually made an ap appearance in the trailer uh, as part of the Hundred Years War campaign. And uh, as you can see, Joan there, I'm actually wearing her around my neck. She's a feminist icon from history. This young woman who led with her convictions and led a battle, and she was a teenager. And so she's beloved. She's in age two in a campaign, and so we know age fans are going to love seeing her again. And the Hundred Years' War with the Can you get any closer than like that to the, the map? 30, or is that as really close as you can get to the map? really going to bring that period of history to life. And all the live action footage that you saw in the trailer on Sunday, that's all from within the game. Wow. We have these multiple documentaries that will play between the missions to storytell and really bring it to life as you journey through the Hundred Years' War. Yeah, taking a completely different approach to how we're uh, telling a story mm -hmm. in Matter of fact, I don't think I've seen any game that no. does what we're doing yeah. in terms of wow. how we're showing the story and how we're getting people involved yeah. with history. So it really, super exciting. really brings it to life. And and I've learned things about English history from these documentaries I didn't learn in school. So yeah. they're educating as, as well as moving the game forward. 
Now, community feedback is always important in, in any game, but especially in something like Age. Now, how have you taken some of that feedback into development for Age 4? So we formed a community council back in 2017. We wanted our community and our players to have a seat at the table for development. We're making the game for them. So they've been hands on with the game for a really long time and giving us their honest feedback. And we then take that to the game team and they look at making changes based on what they've told us. So they've influenced things from the look of the UI icons, the influence system that's built into age four. They really, really helped us with their viewpoints, make the game better. Uh, and one thing they really pushed for actually was naval. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, we actually, you know, if you look at a lot of the data, you know, we see data on all of the Age of Empires games that people play. And Naval is one of those things that in Age 2, a lot of people don't use it, which is crazy, right? But if it wasn't there, people would miss it so much. And, and sometimes we have to ask those hard questions when we're making games, right? We say, like, do we, do we need to do this? And it was something that we, we felt weird about. And we went to the council with it and we're like, hey, you know, not even you guys don't play naval all the time. Like, do we need it? And they're like, yeah, no, we see your point, but you know, you have to have this. Yeah. And it was great. It was a great reaffirmation. Um, and we throw a lot of things like that at our council to make sure that we're making the game that's great for all the different kinds of players that love Age of Empires all over the world. And now we're heading towards launch. Yeah. We're branching out beyond our council. People are going to get hands on for the first time. So we had a fan preview event back in April and we looked at the feedback from that and have made changes since then. So, you know, you let us know that you didn't feel like the weapon scaling was quite right. So mm -hmm. we've gone ahead and we've improved that. That is fantastic. Now, you actually hit on something that I wanted to jump into mm -hmm. because Age has been around for a while. There's been previous games, but you continue to make content for those. So mm -hmm. what's some of the news you can share as far as development with some of the legacy Age games? Uh, well, we have a new expansion coming in August for Age 2 Definitive Edition called Dawn of the Dukes. And in that expansion, we're going to be adding two more civilizations, the Bohemians and the Poles, and three new campaigns for the Lithuanians, the Bohemians, and the Poles. And those are great, great stories about a really cool, like, uh, brother, brother, brother and sister teams that work together to kind of rise up these empires. And I can't wait for people to get a ha their hands on it. And the great thing is, is that if you pre-order Age of Empires 4, um, you get that for free. That's part of mm -hmm. the deal for pre-ordering Age 4 on, on the different platforms. And um, for Age 3, of course, because we don't want to leave them out either. Yeah. Um, Age 3 <laughs> Definitive Edition, we're hard at work on an African PDLC with new civilizations and campaigns. Cool. Yeah. And I can't wait. I think so, you're going uh, to try out We're not ready Age to, of to talk Empires. About that one just yet. But if you don't want to miss out, or, go to ageofempires.com, become an insider. You get a little sneak peeks at things we've got coming and chances. I mean, why not? It's on Game Pass, so yeah. it doesn't now, really shifting us back to the present cost any more money. Mm -hmm. What's except some of the things people can expect as we um, lead up to launch? Storage, well, right? That's, a, a <laughs> that's the only problem, today. storage. So <laughs> we, yeah, we're going to name our remaining launch sims and our remaining It's going to be so campaigns. cool when we yet. have xCloud available launch, on, two remaining civilizations um, on the console so you can play xCloud on the console. And that and is going to be a really, really good choice oh, to play nice. games on no, no, when you have enough I'm storage so excited. I can get all gushing about <laughs> things like this. Um, we're gonna, you're going to have to wait a little more to, to get information and see more detail on those civilizations and campaigns, but um, we've also got you know a ton of stuff planned. We have a beta that's going to be coming up. Mm -hmm. So um, you, know, you can go to ageofempires.com yeah. to sign up for be an insider to get in our beta and get a chance to actually get hands-on with the game. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, again, you know we're launching October 28th. October 28th. Yeah. Yep. How long to wait? Of uh, on, uh, you know, on Steam, on Windows 10, and on Game Pass for PC. Mm -hmm. So it should be great. Any way you want to play. We're just uh, really excited. That 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 is great. <laughs> oh, it's and not I'm on sure the console. It's just on the PC. The are really looking Still. forward to that. So, again, Adam, Emma, thank you so much for thank being here. Thanks for having us on. No, thank you. Massive battles across land, air, and sea have been a hallmark of the Battlefield series from the beginning. In this next video, oh, design director see. Daniel Berlin will tell us more about what DICE can do when it brings all-out warfare. I was not expecting Battlefield 2042 to be on this. Feels like they're going through like every game that they announced at uh, E3. The thing that will really excite players is the introduction of all this cutting edge technology that we're just infusing into the sandbox. I think just having the comeback of the helicopter on the battlefield, it just introduces a whole new layer to the sandbox. It just gives players so much more tools 
that makes it more battlefield than it's been in a very long time. So we really enable our players more to be really, really creative <laughs> with the tools we give them. It makes a battlefielder than every, about any battlefield before this battlefield. Open war setting and being able to say like, hey, there's a problem over there, go solve it. And the players actually choose how they want to solve that problem and through that process create their own battlefield moments. So in 2042, you will experience three really distinct experiences. Um, the one we're talking about right now, we're talking about today, is the experience that we call the all-out warfare experience. Now, this is the place you go in 2042 when you want to have those classic battlefield experiences, this massive war, whereas, you know, air, land, and sea, you're just coming together in these massive battles. But we've actually made a distinction between two separate experiences within the all-out warfare uh, experience, and that's Conquest, which is a very much a staple for our franchise. It's something that our fans know and love, and we're just taking the Conquest experience to the max this time around. Conquest is all about um, the freedom, the access to the sandbox, being able to choose where you fight, how you fight, where you want to go. But it's also experience that um, will allow players to kind of choose their own pacing. And there's moments in Conquest where it's complete chaos. When a lot of players, just, just, they just converge on a single point and the chaos goes up to the maximum. But there's also moments where we're seeing Conquest new where, stuff here. You know, you just had that big battle and now you've won that battle. And you go like, OK, you bring up your map and you have a conversation with your friends and you say like, OK, where do we want to go next? Oh. We need to go over there to that state. Okay, how do we get there? Oh, let's call in a vehicle. And a vehicle, you can uh, call it in wherever you want. And then your oh, friends cool. hop into the transport vehicle and you go across the map and you go to a new location where there's a new fight. So Conquest is just that full freedom to the sandbox. And right next to that lives um, the other experience within All Out Warfare, which is Breakthrough. And this is a significantly more guided experience. It takes you um, on a journey throughout the entire map and in Breakthrough, there's an attacker and there's a defender team. Um, and we kind of compress them into fighting head on in a specific space. So the, the, the time to action is short and the level of chaos is really, really high. There's helicopters and there's tanks and there's infantry. There's just everything happening. And it's just complete chaos in Breakthrough. So All That Warfare kind of takes these two fan favorite staple modes and we, we make them distinctly lean into their specific strength that's really and cool because you have 128 players S, on next gen consoles of course or um, current gen consoles and uh, and 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 just having 128 people playing against right? each other at the same really, time you know you can have those moments when you with playing, vehicles and explosions and, and, and weather elements this, that's just know, going to be tanks, a soldiers, crazy infantry, helicopters fighter jets just moving in unison and you kind of get this feeling that you're part of something bigger like a really, really massive army. And that's the strength of the massive play spaces that we're building. And we're able to really make this play really well. We've altered our way of handling level design uh, because it wasn't just as simple as, um, you know, just making it bigger and then portion the, the locations out. It doesn't really work. I'm looking way. forward so to Battlefield. A new type of I haven't played Battlefield in a while, clustering. like I said now, in previous videos. That you will have a massive um, battlefield the thing I'm not looking forward to is the seasons and the of charges for so operators and all that. that it's definitely going to be happening is, for this uh, game. I'm not going to go into any specifics about exactly how large it is. Um, but it is definitely one of the larger uh, maps that we will have in 2042. It's one of my favorite maps personally because it has some really, really cool distinct locations within it. Down to the south of the map, you'll have a uh, fully destructible uh, village. This is a great space for infantry and vehicles alike because you know as a battlefield player that infantry is skulking around inside the buildings but you know when you're in your tank or your attack helicopter you can just you know can destroy those buildings and get access to the infantry and you can go further east and you'll find a bunch of high rises skyscrapers and so there's a whole section there where you can enter the skyscrapers you can go up to the top of them you can zip line between the roofs have fights in between the rooftops but if you want to change it up even more you can basically skydive off of the skyscrapers and if you're playing a particular specialist that has access to a wingsuit, 
you can actually glide across the entire map space and get yourself all the way over to the stadium, which is on the east side of the map. And uh, the stadium itself, it's a place you go when you really want to just take out your shotgun and have some close quarters combat. Wow. <laughs> so the mentality here of building larger maps, but creating locations within that map where there's a particular type of gameplay. And with the Conquest game mode, for example, you will also see the, the fact that if you want to capture the entirety of the stadium, it's not just to go there and capture one location. You actually have to capture multiple locations within the stadium in order for you to kind of to, to consider it yours, that your team can actually get benefits from it. So um, lots of dynamic moments on Hourglass. And if you saw in the gameplay trailer as well, there's a massive wall of sand moving across the entire gameplay space. So what happens when this massive wall comes, of course, it engulfs you in the storm itself. But as it passes by, it leaves the, the entirety of the map in a different mood, in a different light, and it changes the visibility for the player. That's really cool. This is a really good time for you to lead into our plus system where you have the capability to actually alter the customization on your weapon. But I'd also like to mention though that the wall of sand is one thing, right? But there's also the possibility of the tornado. The tornado is this massive. So EA is going to have their own conference on the 22nd goes, uh, because they didn't have a conference a during that E3 uh, week. So they're doing their own thing up, next week. Throw you and the map, uh, I'm going to be it. obviously live streaming um, that. But we are supposed to get, there's supposed to be a third mode that the they so haven't talked about for Battlefield 2042. Really We're supposed to get information on that third mode player. during While that conference. And of course, whatever other games EA is going to announce at that event. Every single time because it's players controlling what's happening around you. That's something that you only get in Battlefield. That's that's why I love Battlefield so much. The 22nd is Tuesday next week. Epic action at an epic scale is what we all want from Battlefield 2042. And DICE looks poised to deliver. During the showcase on Sunday, we announced an exciting collaboration between Rare, Xbox, and Disney. With sea All of right, Thieves, sea of a Thieves, Pirate's Life, a pirate's a free life. Update, which brings Captain <laughs> Jack Sparrow and his crew sailing into the Sea of Thieves. Today, we're premiering a brand new trailer showing some of the gameplay you'll experience when you team up with Jack Sparrow for this all new adventure. I can't wait to be a part of this crew. Let's take a look. You will always remember this is the day your crew was joined by Captain Jack Sparrow. Okay, so this is uh, obviously an, uh, them trying to make Sea of Thieves happen. The world and take our rightful places as lords of the sea. Now we have awoken, and we are hungry. Perhaps they'll take me on the grand tour of me. And the first time I saw the oh, Sea of Thieves, like the trailer, not because I actually haven't played the game. But the first time I saw the trailer for Sea of Thieves, I thought it was a Pirates of the Caribbean game, and then you know realized that it wasn't. So it makes sense that they would have partnered up with Disney in order to get the Pirates of the Caribbean characters into the game. Why did it take so long? Who knows, but I, I'm assuming that this is going to bring a different audience and a new audience to Sea of Thieves, which is something that's been lacking. I've heard that the game has gotten better from when it first came out and there's more to do and things like that because the biggest uh, complaint from people was at the beginning when the first the, food, the game first came out that there wasn't much to do that all you did was you know be on your ship and 
Hey everyone, Joni, executive producer on CNBC. <laughs> in the sea. So we've shown and there, the and I think and shown the gameplay rare. To come. So on Sunday, didn't really think Pacific, about what players will do because the, the whole game was showcase. really so reliant on players fighting players. This collaboration, but in order for that to happen, you need to have a lot of players at the same time. So when you're out in the sea and you run into other players, you want to attack players. So the point is, there was a lot of so we didn't want to attack other players who so just wanted to Disney, cruise around on their ships so it's going to be amazing i hope everybody tunes in people so you know will get angry because there wasn't much to do so i thought that was a miscalculation by rare's part and so they've added more things to do missions and things to do in game and now that they're adding sea of fee i mean uh, pirates of the caribbean stuff I think that's going to make it bigger and bring more people to a game that supposedly continues to grow and get better. Like I said, personally, I've never played it, so I wouldn't have a way to compare, but for people that have played that game before, they say that it's a lot better than it used to be. Now this, I definitely want to play. I've been waiting to play since they announced that it was going to come to the Xbox Series X and it looks really really cool. I just want to be able to go into different cities and see how close I can get to the ground. Before I crash. And then they're going to add the Maverick expansion, which is, um, has to do with the upcoming movie from uh, Tom Cruise, which is supposed to be the sequel to Top Gun. Oh, here we go. I guess we're gonna get to fly jets. Will they have weapons? Top Gun Maverick. See the movie, which hasn't come out yet. For the danger zone. <laughs> but we'll get to that in just a second. When Microsoft Flight Simulator launched last year on PC, reviewers and gamers alike were blown away by the stunning visuals and the depth of simulation. Joining us is Jorg Newman, the head of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Jorg, thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. Good to meet you. Those are cool glasses. <laughs> you get your jacket. Yeah, I got my jacket as well. So you had some announcements this Sunday about Microsoft Flight Simulator. Can you go into that a little bit? Yeah, it was super cool. We announced yeah. that Microsoft Flight Simulator is coming to uh, Xbox Series X and S. And the franchise has an awesome history on the PC. It's going back all the way to 1982. You know, it predates Office and Windows. And uh, when we launched last year, it was on the PC only. And it was a really warm welcome from simmers and from press and from people who have never flown flights in before. Yeah. So we're super excited that it comes to console now. And um, so for the first time in the history of the franchise. So I've been That's playing true. Flight Simulator since last year on PC. I have a 3080, but it is now coming to the Xbox Series X and S. What sorcery are you doing to get this running on both of those consoles? I have to know. I think it's a combination of two things, really. I mean, first off, it's a super powerful console. Yes. And then we are really using the Microsoft tech stack in an interesting way. So as you know, Series X and S is like a beast. The, 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 the GPU is awesome, super powerful CPU with multiple cores. Uh, RAM, fast RAM. I wonder what it's going to run on. I guess it's going to be. Planes. Oh, yeah, 4K. There yes, you go. That's what I was about to ask. You're able to read all the text. SSD, fast yeah. internet. So it's basically the equivalent of a really powerful high end PC. And on top of that, on FlightSim, we're using the Microsoft stack a lot. Like we have 2.5 petabyte of data 
It's 1.6 million CDs yeah. uh, sitting on Azure. And um, we're basically streaming that down as you go. And uh, we also do machine learning algorithms up there. And that's how we build procedurally in runtime 1.5 billion houses and 2 trillion trees. So it's a combination of those two things. Super powerful console, super good use of the Microsoft tech stack. You get it to work on console. That's, that's crazy. fantastic. <laughs> now, with Xbox Game Pass and with it coming to console, you're going to expose Flight Simulator to a, whole, a lot of new gamers, right? So what are some of the things that you're going to do to make it more accessible to a wider audience? So we had, to, you're exactly right. We had a little bit of that last year when mm -hmm. we launched because we knew the Flight Simulator, that's their hobby. They came in, they know everything about aviation. They know exactly what to do. But we had a lot of people come in through Xbox Game Pass on PC and basically tried for the first time. So we... Even on the PC launch, we did a bunch of work on onboarding with tutorials. We gave some assistances. But now for this Xbox version, we're actually doing a ton more. Mm -hmm. And I actually brought you a little video. Yeah. Um, and, and so there's five things we did. The first thing, if you're becoming a pilot, the first thing you do is you do a discovery flight. It's basically, you know, you have, your, you have a flight instructor next to you. He does most of the work, he or she. And you get to steer the plane and feel really yeah. good about yourself, yeah. right? And, and so we said, we need to recreate that. So we picked two, two pl 10 places on Earth, like some of the most compelling places, like Mount Everest or Rio de Janeiro or New York or the pyramids. Peru? And we basically put you in a plane. It's ready to go. It's beautiful weather. Yeah. And all you need to do is fly and have fun. And it's, it's, it really is an onboarding experience. It's super good. And then we noticed on the PC side that people are really love to explore the world in flight sim. I did that. I've, I've spent like a month in South America and I've never been to South America. Yeah. And it was super cool. Um, but it was only visuals. And, um, you know, so you didn't quite understand how everything fits together. So now yeah. we added labels and Bing has all these labels basically for every for every POI, like famous place or river or mountain. So we have all those now and we put that into the world That's map. Cool. And even if you go down and you try to plan out your flight, you can now see all the cities around you and it's totally transforms the experience. Same in, in game. So we now have labels in game. Where wow. you see you know, here's Everett, over there is, you know, whatever, the, and you learn about the, the planet more, and it's it's a much more enriching experience, just just experiencing the planet. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the next thing we did um, is that we, we re-ramped the tutorials. We wanted to basically smoothen out the, the, the onboarding experience. We wanted to retain knowledge more. So we had eight tutorials on the PC. Now we have 22, oh, wow. and it's they're shorter, they're much more focused, and we have a performance um, a performance indicator system. So basically it rates you and how you did and you get a score. And honestly, I can speak for myself. Like I'm totally motivated to get better and better and better. And with that, you learn more and more how do you how you really fly. So it's been super successful and I think it's going to help newcomers a lot. The next feature that we have is it's called Flight Assistant, which I use a lot. Um, <laughs> it's basically, so let's imagine you fly over New York and you see you, you want to actually just look at the oh, landscape, New York. But, and just look someone at the city, who loves but New you, York. you know, eventually you want to go to Brooklyn Bridge. So on the flight instructor, you can now, uh, flight assistance, you can now click on, go to Brooklyn Bridge, and the AI, almost like a co-pilot next to you, will fly you to the Brooklyn Bridge, and you can just look around and have an interesting time. Same with airports, which are sometimes challenging for people. Like, we can click on the airport and say, please land me at, say, Newark Airport. And then the last thing is, if you really get yourself in trouble, like you stall out the plane or something like that, you can actually now click into, yeah, uh, you can now go and, and basically say, recover. And it's almost like the pilot is sitting next to you. It's super helpful. I think that people will love it. And the last thing was, um, you know, we learned that people are, everybody's good taking off, but some people are hesitant to land specifically yes. when you look at like big international airports and they seem scary and you need to talk to the air traffic controller and all that super technical. Oh, so so cool. we added a new feature called land anywhere. So much. Just land, let them land anywhere. And then um, when you do that, the first thing you see is 71% of the planet is water. Yes. So we added basically floats to a bunch of our planes and you can land all, everywhere now in the ocean or in rivers or wherever. Same with snow. So we have skis on, ski, on on our planes now, and so you can go to the polar regions, mountaintops, or when it's winter, because we have winter and it's snowing, uh, you can now land anywhere. So I think those five things in combination will really make it easier for people who have never been in a flight sim, because it's, you know, we, 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 as we made a decision not to dumb down the flight sim. It's not easier. It's not gamified. Right. Like we made, we gave you assist, we gave That's assistances to help you learn how to actually play fly a plane. I think we're going to achieve that. So. So if you play this, you are going to become a pilot. So if you're ever in an airplane and you put enough hours into this simulator, you'll be able to take over the plane, 
to the console that, that can safely. somewhat replicate that experience. So people will be totally, yeah. happy so to know story. that uh, so uh, when really you're playing this, you can be like, I'm not playing a game. I'm actually learning how to fly a plane. One. If you have that, and then there's also the Hoti Hotas flight stick, yep. and so we fully support those two. And then we worked with all the main top notch peripheral makers, both on PC and Xbox. And I can all I can say is there are going to be some really good announcements coming up. Yep. And for Core Sim, I can say you can now play, we have the software to, to have a full Core Sim experience, and we'll have the hardware on Xbox. All for the first time on a console. It's going to be great. Oh, that's going to be great. Now, we, we obviously had the funny start with, with the Top Gun Maverick expansion pack. You announced that. But can you go into a little more detail about that? So yeah, I mean, can expect? we couldn't uh, be more excited, right? Like, who is I mean, better? It's, it's really like Xbox a dream come up. Yeah. If you think about entertainment and the oh, franchises yes. that celebrate aviation, you will actually come to Microsoft Flight Simulator and, and Top Gun. It depends. And this, it's a perfect marriage. Right now, so, we'll have um, to say Xbox because of Game Pass. It, the movie but I do like you know, um, wraps, the exclusive that the PlayStation has and all their consoles and that you cannot play anywhere. There might be another plane. So I think both I have their strengths. Fast, like really fast. And we're going to be in the danger zone. That is, that is going to be great. Right, right now, there really now, isn't... Um, There's not much else you can say about the Maverick I mean, we don't really pack, know what, what else PlayStation is doing because they haven't had an E3 conference, so, um, so some of their games are getting said, delayed. We're gonna launch, we're gonna launch and have so a right now, update, like a big meaningful up to this point, I would say Xbox ago, is winning so far because of all the games that are going to be coming out with. We just pick a zone on Earth, like the United States or Japan or like England and Ireland and we make that really better like we get the latest possible the best possible satellite imagery we, we create an elevation map that basically makes the mountains look better we, we make we create 3d cities like after launch we launched London and Paris and then we also make missions so we celebrate the planet like with these updates and we're just going to go around the planet we're, we're, we're shipping two more this year and six more next year and then we also have something called sim updates, simulation updates, where we work with the manufacturers of planes, with the flight sim community out there that knows tons about everything. Do they have updates and, uh, coming up for with, uh, the PC with, game? Are we going to be getting those updates at the same the time on better and better. The console? The goal is to make the ultimate sim. Yeah. It's the perfect thing of totally authentic. And then on top of that, you should expect the unexpected. Like with just like with Maverick, which I don't think people really got, saw coming, yeah. there will be more of that. And I think I, all I can say is <laughs> no, it'll get the coming. gamers and the simmers both their hearts pounding. So keep watching the skies. That is awesome. Now, again, <laughs> I'm so excited that more people are going to get to play Flight Simulator. I've been playing it on PC. I love it. I highly recommend everyone do the flight from LA to Paris. It's really good, very cathartic. But as we get out of here, I want to thank you so much for taking some time to talk about flight. Hey, you know, you can probably, if you're going to go on so vacation much. somewhere, you can thank probably you. use this game to, to come. We have get an idea of what you're going to be flying course, over. Halo Infinite. Maybe do this fly yourself before you actually go on your trip. Eight, and it's got a ton of That's really to cool. It. I just Here's thought about that when he mentioned that LA to Paris. From Super Giant Games later this year on Xbox Series X and S. We just announced that Hades, our Game of the Year winning roguelike dungeon crawler, is coming soon to Xbox. And I want to introduce you to some of the Spear gods, ghosts, and monsters spoilers. you'll meet in our rendition of the ancient Greek underworld. You don't need any Who do you go for? You go for Xbox Hades, or PlayStation? Play, Which one? To what's what's, of what's your opinion comes on that? From mythology? The answer is a whole lot. Greek myth is filled with wild, fascinating, often contradictory stories of these larger than life characters. The Olympians are a big, complicated family, always bickering and always pushing each other, and their portrayals in classical mythology inspired our portrayals in Hades. Let's start with Hades himself. What is it now? Of a mountain of infernal parchment work. He's often relegated to the role of villain in many modern adaptations of Greek myth, but in classical mythology, he's a complicated guy, and much more principled than some of his brothers or sisters. He's so fascinating, we made a whole game about him. As the god of the dead, Hades has an imposing reputation to live up to, so he even has a monstrous pet in the three-headed hound of hell, Cerberus. The idea that this savage beast was still somebody's pet dog crystallized how we wanted to portray the gods in Hades, that despite being immortal and all-powerful, they're not so different from the rest of us. Though, let's not forget Zagreus. We've heard from many players who figured Zagreus was a god of our own creation. After all, who's ever heard of Hades having any kids? But according to some ancient sources, he did. Greetings, father. 
My ransacking was a very dangerous way of throwing a sword behind you. In classical mythology, Zagreus is a little known Chthonic god, meaning a god of the underworld, sometimes associated with Dionysus, the god of wine. But in other cases, he is associated with Hades. How could Hades have a son nobody knows about? How does he fit into the myths we do know of Hades? We were so drawn to answering these questions that they form the basis for the entire story of this game. If you're the prince of the underworld, who do you get as your personal trainer? That would be Achilles, a near invincible warrior in his day, once called the greatest of the Greeks. Good to see you, lad, despite the circumstances. Remember your training out there. The pain of death is but another obstacle. Hades takes place after his untimely demise during the Trojan War, once he's had a lot of time to reflect on his life choices. Achilles lived in glory, so he's got an okay gig in the afterlife, but some wretched souls end up in a really bad spot in the underworld, and for better or worse, they get to meet Megara. Ever stubborn, are you? Maybe my whip might make you reconsider whatever it is that you're attempting here. She is one of the Why does she talk like this? Why can't she just talk like a normal person? Worst souls for all eternity. And in our game, she's also tasked with making sure Zagreus doesn't make it out of the underworld. These two have a lot of history, and since the story of Hades keeps moving forward each time you play, the more you run into Megara, the better you'll get to know her. There's also Thanatos. If you know what I mean. He may decide to drop in on you when he isn't busy whisking the souls of the recently departed to the underworld. Thought you could just get away from me, did you? He is the personification of death, according to Greek myth, though it represents more of a peaceful death than, say, the kind that happened a lot during something like the Trojan War. So even though he can seem a little sinister at first, in the spirit of the mythology, we wanted our Thanatos to have a gentler side. Thanatos has a couple of brothers in Hades, such as Hypnos here, the personification of sleep. What? Who says here one of the wretched thugs got you? Too bad. When he's not dozing on the job, Hypnos can comment on every single possible way you can die in this game, of the dozens and dozens of different possibilities. Where did all these gods of the underworld come from anyway? According to the Theogony, this is a very long look into Hades. Myth by Hesia, that introduces all the gods and their ancestors. Many of the Chthonic gods came from Nyx, the personification. It's of releasing night. a game that I'm Darkness guide you, child. very interested in. This house. Of that I am now certain. Should you return again? Not only because it's roguelike, and if you know what roguelike means, means that every time you die, you start all over again. And in our game, uh, she has an important role but, uh, in the underworld, not the least of which and is I'm, helping you I mean, unlock some of your hidden power. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of mythology, so I don't really to meet and grow closer to the more you play care games, about this game. We hope you enjoy getting to know them all. Some of them feel truly ancient and godlike. Some are funny, some are scary. We found them incredibly inspiring and hope you do too, once you get to meet everybody when Hades comes to Xbox One and Series X on August 13th. This is going to be a skip for me, but thank you for the information. That was a game I would have wanted to hear more about. That game... Um... Oh man, I forgot the name of it now. Somerville, I think it's called. I'm gonna move the music in case I copyright. So Hates... I don't know, ha Hates... Hades seems to be a game that they're really banking on for some reason. The gunk. They showed this last year. I think last year or the year before that that was coming out. But they didn't give more information on it. I mean we know Among Us is coming. We saw about more about Stalker. Cut. This game I don't know what's about either. Like they showed the trailer during E3 with weird music and I did not know, I, I don't know what the game is about. I mean, that's a game that I wish I would have said, talked more about. Neighbor, Hello Neighbor. Have you ever, ever played Hello Neighbor, the first Hello Neighbor? That's kind of a roguelike game too, Hello Neighbor.
This is the this is the game I want to know more about. This game doesn't look that exciting. It just like all they showed is, I mean, I guess this view like snowboarding, right? But but there doesn't seem to be much more than snowboarding. And I guess the argument could be with uh, Tony Hawk games. There's nothing else but skateboarding. But I don't know. I just it just didn't look like there was much to do there besides, like I just said, uh, snowboarding, half pipes, and all that. Go big or never. So I guess we're gonna get more information on grounded. And Grounded is a game that I actually have on my list of games to play. It's in my console. It's been downloaded in my console for it's a pleasure to be here. Months, like for maybe a year now. Love Grounded. Love everything that you guys have been doing. I haven't gotten around to playing it. Mushroom system. What can you tell me about that? Yeah, so that's one of the big things for the Shroom and Doom update is uh, mushrooms. We're really changing how the the uh, yard the game is with still mushrooms. every mushroom in early access, the so the game is not which is really cool. So released the small yet. ones, the big ones, the big toadstools, the ones which is why they just caves. added now, um, achievements to the, the game before, but now for you can this uh, harvest uh, them. upcoming um, update. Mushroom uh, the stuff Shroom out of them. update. Um, the next kind of uh, part of that is that uh, we're adding a couple base building elements. Uh, like mushroom bricks. Yeah. So you have to take all those mushrooms that you find and then you have to grind them up in a grinder which is a new building and then you have to take them to your oven which is another new building that we're adding and uh, bake the, the mushroom uh, stuff into bricks and then uh, with the mushroom brick buildings there's a whole host of new options for base builders um, and it's more fortified walls um, and a bunch of other options so you can build a cool big castle. Oh that's really cool. <laughs> now we saw the brood mother, so you're bringing Minecraft bosses into grounded. What can you tell me about that? What does that mean for the direction of the game as we move forward? Yeah, so uh, the brood mother is our first boss. Yeah. Um, that so we we actually launched with the brood mother, um, and we didn't really feel it hit the right mark. So we took the brood mother out, and we wanted to spend a lot of time making it a really memorable boss fight. So we put a lot of development effort in behind the brood mother, and it's going to really feel like a big, huge fight and a memorable one. Um, there's a lot of kind of cool things with it. I don't want to spoil everything. Yeah, right. I want players to kind of experience it for themselves. But uh, it definitely is uh, something that we want players' feedback uh, to see, like, what do they like? What do they not like? How is the challenge? We want to make it really challenging um, with, and have a good reward for defeating the Broodmother. But is it going to be, is it too hard? Uh, we'd like to know that. So uh, for future development on Grounded, like, we want to make more bosses. And so we want to get all that feedback to improve the system. Now, you actually bring up a great point about community, but I'll put a pin in that and come back to it in a second. So I know you don't want to spoil anything about the brood mother, but is there any tips you can kind of give people ahead of time on what they can do to survive that encounter? I would definitely say that you would need to make sure you have the highest tier armor and yeah. gear up really well for this fight because it, it is going to be difficult. And then uh, you also want to have the right mutations equipped as well. Uh, and uh, if you're playing with your friends, uh, it might be good to, for one of your friends or yourself to use the brand new crossbow we're going to put into the game so you can have some ranged DPS while someone else like face tanks the, the Broodmother. Yeah. So it's going to be pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So again, going back to community, I, I know you love getting feedback about Grounded, obviously starting as an early access game, but um, what are some of the things that you're looking for as far as in this, this update? Is What was something that you got feedback-wise from the community that you put in this update? Yeah, so there's, there's, you know, it's one thing that we love working with community. So that's, that's something that we, as developers, we love just hearing what people have to yeah. say about the game, and we're continually developing it with the community. This guy um, looks so like my friend Smack. New things in our, in our new update. Um, one of those things is uh, flipping buildings, um, and that's one thing that we're really like, uh, just adding like those little features. Uh, another one is just sprinting up ladders, which is something that like. You know, just hearing people how they interact with ladders and adding a sprint mode. The other one is 
one of our uh, funnier features that we're adding is sitting in chairs. Yeah. <laughs> so it's something yeah. that, that yeah. a lot of people yeah. really, really wanted. Um, and we're also interested in like the first phase of t pets in the game. So we're going to start with yeah. aphids. So you'll be able to tame an aphid, oh, run great. around the yard with the aphid. But you also got to make sure you protect your aphid because yeah. accidents can happen in yeah. the backyard. Oh, there, there's one other thing too, achievements. So we're really excited to, to announce that we yeah, have finally. achievements in Grounded, and that's that's purely based on everyone's feedback. Everyone's been wanting achievements, yeah. and so we're finally adding them to the game. That's really good. Now, again, sticking with well, this Well, that's because uh, every game on Xbox has achievements, so, so it's weird to have a game that doesn't have achievements. And it sounds like pretty much the foundation of what Grounded is was built off of community feedback. So how does that process work internally for you as far as people submitting like, hey, I, I, I want to sit, you know, I want achievement bets. <laughs> like, how does that whole process work? So we have a lot of like avenues where we gather feedback from the community. So we have, we do weekly developer streams where mm -hmm. chat can ask a bunch of questions with when we have Adam on or other developers or myself, uh, and we'll get gather feedback and sessions there. And then our main source of feedback is through our official discord, uh, Grounded the Game. And uh, I use a series of bots to gather a bunch of feedbacks from the players and then from there, uh, me, Adam, uh, a couple members of the team, and from also from the community team get together, and we have a weekly meeting going over all the suggestions and kind of prioritizing what will work and what we can what we can put later in the future for like other suggestions. Excellent. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for taking some time to come talk to me about this new update for Grounded. I was it not looks expecting like a lot of fun. to I'm have get to sit. I guess right new now. information <laughs> on Grounded. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. It's almost time for a closer look at the multiplayer trailer for Halo Infinite. But first, it's time to see what the snow, the slopes, Wait, and the powder spray look like when powered by Xbox But they're going to show X the overview that just came this out from 343 Industries again? Hey there, and welcome to the stream where you How about you talk to us about Halo single-player campaign? That's what we want to know. About. We we understand what multiplayer Halo. is, what there is going to what, what's going to happen in multiplayer. We would like to know yeah, about single-player. That's what I want to know. Uh, we've been tinkering on this game for a while now, and while it's still in development, we're happy to show you more of this game. So I'm switching to our developer drone cam. I can actually spawn wherever I want, like instantly. But I first want to show you some of the areas uh, we've been working on. Uh, this mountain resort is called Frozen Wood. It's inspired by some of the resorts in the French Alps where I've been snowboarding a lot. It has these cozy parks, side kickers, half pipes, really big rails, a lot of features in there. Way more than you would expect in a normal mountain resort. But hey, this is a video game and we want as many features as possible. So yeah, like I said, this is completely open and you can go snowboarding anywhere you'd like. You can do some missions, there's like a story evolving around the main character that wants to participate in a kick-ass invitational border cross event. We can also just cruise around and find some nice lines with a good flow, like for example here in the Spillow-like environment that was shown in the trailer. Or you can go up there, like take some huge kickers and big rails at the big park. And just look how big this mountain range is, like we've got space for industrial areas and street areas, there's backcountry, high mountain riding, there's even an old Italian looking village you can shred. A lot of these locations have been inspired by events happening all over the world and snowboarding movies that inspired us these past years. It's kind of a tribute to, in fact. Also, anywhere you go, you can always ride during golden hour due to our real-time lighting engine. But hey, having a fun and realistic environment is nice, but it's not fun without nailing the riding itself, right? Yeah, so for the actual nobody, a big inspiration for us all, I think it's been pro riders and snowboard movies and all the crazy stuff that they do on a snowboard. And of course ourselves riding in real life and just having fun and being creative on a snowboard. It, that's something that we want to bring into the game. Conceptually, we're trying to keep the convention of one stick for the board and one stick for the body and directly map that onto the snowboarder. So at any point you should get a physical or animation response as soon as you're touching those sticks. And it, it gives you a lot of freedom in your playstyle, so you can choose to be smooth and When you lazy, jump from like the top of a mountain... Like fast and aggressive where you, you can change up your style however you want. From like a really, really high... Fluid, 
and stylish part of the mountain being very reactive so that, that's a big challenge and we had to create a complete animation Did you show this no border falling just for this and here you can see the board interacting with the snow he put some weight into his turn and he really digs in those edges into the snow for a clean carb or you, you can just use the the board stick here i went snowboarding once and i almost broke my knees feature, <laughs> but you can also use good times the sticks combined for even greater control yeah like you, here you can see him balancing on the tail of the board this is called buttering from this stance you can also start tricking just as in normal riding so for the trick stiff system we're trying to give as much control as possible to any trick you see this is what i'm talking about like okay they, when they explained it it sounds cool and exciting but then great every grab you can do you can also you, you know seeing this is not like you're just all by yourself so, so for a really big like spear, gigantic mountain down in takeoff while you're in there, you keep your body tight, so you keep spinning. Like I could see how it could be and then it's just a matter of putting down your relaxing, like a way to relax and just kind of go and and succeed, it looks very snowboard through the mountain and do jumps and things like that. But we're trying to achieve a really fun snowboard game. But I, I don't know, it just doesn't seem exciting. A new day is upon us. A new generation built to fight. Together. When people talk about walk simulators, this is like a peaceful, zen, uh, snowboarding simulator. That looks cool. So there, it looked like it was it wanted it was about to shoot the grenade off its leg. I wonder if you can actually do that, or they just show that for the trailer. So the other thing I was thinking about with the grapple is how often can you use it? Does it have a cooldown window? Because what happens with the people that are like? Spider-Man, like all the time, just like sh 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 you know, throwing the grapple around and like swinging. Can you pull vehicles from the air, or can you pull like banshees closer to you? Like, if a whole team decides to shoot their grapple of one tank, can they pull the tank close, like towards them, kind of thing, or will they just all get pulled towards the tank? That's those. Those are some of the questions that I have. Okay, we're gonna get skulls. See, like that, like that, he brought that to him or her, whatever. And that can you do the same with vehicles? Okay, see, I wanna know about single player. Holiday 2021. I am Still. so excited to have Tom, Alex, and Quinn from 343 Industries. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. Thanks for having us. Now, I've watched this multiplayer trailer numerous times, and I want to see some specific moments from it so we can break it down. So can we roll the trailer to 15 seconds in, and let's talk about a new character. A new day is upon us. A new generation built to fight. Well, that's for the Academy. Which is going to be like a training ground for people who hasn't played Halo before. All right, now who is this character? She looks like she's in charge. Uh, your, your, your senses are right there. She's very much in charge. That's Commander Lorette. She's in charge of the Spartan Academy, which is the kind of contextual wrapper that the whole multiplayer universe lives in. She is basically training the new generation of Spartans to you know, become better. And that's really where everything wraps around. Um, I really love this character. And then what's cool is not only is it kind of the contextual wrapper for the game, but it's also we have a whole suite of academy features, we call them, where there's a tutorial that teaches the players the fundamental basics of the game. There's weapon drills that let you practice with every weapon that exists in the game and get improve your skills with those and then there's a whole thing we call training mode which lets you play against bots um, 
on any map, basically, in the game and lets you experiment with the toys and kind of learn the flows of everything. So we really want to bring players on board at the game and, again, under her orders and her charge. Now, I want to go to 50 seconds in the trailer because there was a lot of action going on and I want to check that out. See, like that, like when you grapple to the ceiling, like how many times can you do that grappling to the ceiling? Like can you grapple, shoot, go down, grapple, shoot, go down? Because if you can master that move, it'll be really hard to kill that person. Now, you may have noticed I sat up in my chair a little bit on that <laughs> one because there was a lot going on there. So please, if you can break that down, let me know what we were seeing. <laughs> That's there's a lot to break down. I don't know if we got enough time to get all the way into it. Yeah. Um, but the some of the, the the things that I really love when I look at that trailer is that that first sequence where the player they have the bulldog shotgun, they're running through, shotgunning enemies. They it's a grab cool the, the commando off the off the rack, put some shots in, low sensor. Like there's all sorts of different things that the player is interacting with, and that's the sandbox. That's what we call the sandbox, the toys that is at the disposal yeah. for our players' hands and. And we just really love that that moment in the trailer where they have the grapple shot, they look up, grapple the ceiling, and then in midair, no scope snipe an enemy, come all the way down, back whack a foe, and, and then the rest is history as you just see what happened in that trailer. But that's just some of the stuff that, that players can do, and that's actually the game. That's not just a, a movie for cinematic experience. Like That is the game that if players are good enough, put in time, they can actually do the things that you see in that trailer. Yeah, and few things are more important to Halo multiplayer than like interacting with the sandbox and combining it, picking it up off the map and combining it into awesome play styles. So um, what we did was um, every uh, sandbox item in the game, when it spawns, it's spawning on an object in the map. So you can see where those things can be found. And then it also tells you the respawn time of that item, when it's gonna come back. And you always know, I can go grab that commando over at this uh, spot like that that guy did so and then when the players you know accrue all those awesome items and do awesome things you know you heard the return of uh jeff steitzer the multiplayer announcer uh shouting out medals so we always want to give players medals when they do really cool things so you heard some there and you'll hear some later on in the trailer oh, that's awesome see when i watch that to me that's halo that's halo to me i absolutely love that now let's skip ahead a little bit more into the trailer to 57 seconds i heard a voice so I want to know what this voice is. Let's let's see it. Hello. Let's That's your AI. Because on this game, we're gonna to get to pick yeah, our so AI, AI. Players, uh, personal AI or our own Cortana, um, so pretty in much. Halo Five, they, there was a squad leader that uh, announced, you know, when weapons are gonna come up uh, and other things going on in the match. And in Infinite, we have the player, uh, like Chief has Cortana. Uh, they have a personal AI in their helmet uh, that is kind of telling them these things. Uh, and it's also another way that players can um, show their personality on their in their characters. So there's multiple personalities and characters for the uh, player to choose, um, so that the the right AI is right. in their helmet, uh, helping them out in combat. I want to skip ahead a little further here because I think I might have saw big team battle. So so let's go to a minute 40 and, and check that out. <laughs> that looked like big team battle to me. <laughs> what, what, what's cool. coming there? What are we going to do? Big team battle. 
I mean, that looks it's not fun. just that. I mean, part it actually opens with actually a 4v4 with a vehicles map called Behemoth in the, at the beginning. So we, we actually are bringing vehicles back into the 4v4 arena. But then, yes, it definitely transitions into the 4v4 or the 12v12 actually BTB part of the game where we're actually making it a bigger team battle this time. Really wanting to index into the battle fantasy with the more players. Where instead of like vehicles just spawning around the map, we have pelicans drop them off. We have ordnance pods that drop in new weapons. And inside of that whole time, you have the battle commander, Lorette, talking in your ear giving you orders and trying to kind of encourage you to play around but really just bringing the whole sandbox and the play style around this whole battle experience that we're building yeah tom brings up some good points there of of uh commander lorette and this you've you've got your commander on the comms and then you've got the pelicans dropping vehicles and items off you got drop pods everything it just is like this this theater of war that this time around it, it is this 12v12 bigger team battle if you will and just that last that the ending segment which is like a capture the flag match is just so beautiful and awesome where you've got the pelican drop the banshee off teams fight over it you're, you're you and your teammate are just making a beeline for the banshee your teammate gets picked off by the sniper and you're like oh no and then you get the skewer take that sniper out jump into the banshee and you hit the jets and fly up into the sky and go for the enemy flag that is that to us is uh what is so exciting about this version of big team battle with all of the toys all the vehicles the modes coming back the maps the brand new maps that you see there i mean it's it's going to be an amazing experience yeah uh, trust me I, I cannot wait to get my hands on it for myself but let's move on i want to go to 208 in the trailer because i, I think i saw a samurai so let, let's check that out let's go to 208 in the trailer Are really breaking this down, huh? Now, show me what you can do. Okay, so I guess next would be a ninja because that was definitely a samurai. So, kind of talk about that. So, we're going to start seeing some more customization with the armor coming yeah, in. Yeah, I mean, that is a samurai Spartan armor. Yeah. And so, it'll be an, a, an armor you'll be able to unlock for free in the first season, which is super cool. Players will be able to equip it, you know, gain more armor pieces and customization options for it, et cetera, across the season. And then we actually have more of this stuff kind of coming down the line. Where there's actually some really cool ideas that we're seeing in uh, that our team that's building that stuff. So, there'll be a lot of other cool armors besides just the really core halo spartan armors there'll be some other different kind of twists and things for players to play with awesome look now before we get out of here first of all i want to thank all of you for being here mm, to, looks to like it's almost done. infinite i'm excited i can't wait to get my hands on it and play it but almost two hours do leave, is there anything else that you want to bring up and let fans out there know about well, single I'm player for people to actually get their hands on it like yourself so i mean if people sign Beta. up for our halos insiders program we have in the summer we have a uh uh, a, a technical preview that we're going to be launching and so people to finally get their hit put their hands on the sticks and i'm just really excited for players to actually finally get to play the game we're working on yeah and then on launch day finally Halo infinite multiplayer is free to play which is new to the franchise the team is super excited uh to hopefully bring in you know all sorts of fans that have potentially never experienced the franchise or haven't played in a long time to just try it out come in and, and try it out with your friends me with my buddies if i had some friends out yeah. there that haven't played halo before i'm like well, it's free. Just, just come on. Let's let jump in, download it. Let's let's check it out. And if it's for you, it's for you. If it's not, then hey, it's not. But kind of think it'll be for you. So I'm excited for it. Yeah, that's the the other big key of that point is uh, PC, right? Like this is this is a, a PC game as well. We've been putting a lot of effort into that. So not only is it going to be console, but also PC, if free to play. Like the barrier to entry is so low, and that has us excited. And I think as we really just to to really think about it. I really like that jacket. On this game. And as developers, when you work on a game, you want to get that game out there. And that almost seems like, for us, that's the finish line. But in reality, it's going to be the starting line for, for all of us. For us and the Halo fans, day one, there's going to be a bunch of content there and things that are exciting and good. But then we're going to add more content. We're going to add more maps. We're going to add more modes and weapons and vehicles, equipment items. And it's just the beginning of this whole journey that that we've been on for a while, and we're going to take everyone else with us as we uh, as the game comes out. I'm excited, gentlemen. Again, thank you so much. Now, for fans who want to learn even more about Halo Infinite multiplayer, check out the brand new deep dive video with the whole multiplayer team 
over on Halo I actually have that video on my channel if you want to see it. And um, I'm going to include it in the description section as well, so you can go straight to it. The next 12 months will be nothing short of spectacular. It has been my absolute a lot of games coming to be out. your host and share this experience with you. But before I go, here's a gameplay deep dive from the team behind the highly anticipated Scarlet Nexus. Scarlet Nexus. Am I aware of this game? と so, um, interesting fact is that Xbox is growing in Japan. The, the Xbox Series consoles are doing the best any other console has done in Japan before. There's high demand for uh, for an Xbox console. If you are aware, the Xbox has struggled to get a foothold in a Japanese market since they started with the Xbox. Uh, the Xbox One barely made a dent on sales. Like, and, and for a moment there, I think they kind of they were kind of resigned to the fact that the Japanese market just wasn't a market that they could do much in. But when the Xbox series came out, it became a very popular console. Then the uh, sales, the consoles they had available to sell, they actually sell out. And so there's been high demand for it. The Japanese uh, developers have actually reached out to Microsoft and Xbox to work with them to make games for them. And so I think that we're going to be seeing more Japanese games coming to Xbox than we have before. And so I think this is one of those examples. Which is is why they have it in this press conference that's going like for almost two hours now and they have it at the end because they know obviously that the western market which is the major the biggest market that xbox has this isn't going to be as interesting right but if you put it at the tail end you still give it time people who are interested in japanese games can see that you're going to have this game coming to the, to the console and the Japanese market also feels represented but I, I expect more of this in future um, Xbox game showcases あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
、まあ、その時片方の視点では見えなかったあの状況とかを別の視点ではこう楽しんでいただける、まあ、そういうストーリーの楽しみ方を皆さんに提供したいと思って今回2人の視点で見てみましたそして1人目がこちらですね唯一好きなキャラクターですね彼はですね幼い頃に描いておりますが幼い頃に描いておりますが幼い頃に描いておりますが救われたっていう経験を持っていてでその経験から自らも描いておりますがして入隊したっていうキャラクターになっています、はい、そしてもう一人がこちらの重ねランドールですねはい、彼女はですね非常に優れた超能力を持っているもうエリートと呼ばれる、えー、キャラクターですね、えー、海斗抜群からも、えー、スカウトして入隊した、えー、非常に、えー、優秀なキャラクターです。左側がですね、この重ねの視点ですね。で、右側がユイトの視点でのイベントシーンになっていきますが、今、重ねの視点でご覧いただいた通り、ちょっとユイトの姿が見えたりとかしています。で、今、重ねの方ですね、一緒に同行しているキャラクター、このキャラクターが、そう、未来予知のキャラクター、ちょっとこのあユイトたちがやられそうだなっていうのはちょっとわかるような。シーンになってます、まあ、この頃あのイートの方は今止めてますけどこれはユートの方では入らずに次のシーンに進んでいきます。という形で、はい、進んでいくと、えーまあ、こういうふうに貝が降ってきてあ同じようなこう状況に置かれてしまう、まあ、ユートの方ではこういうふうになってるんだなっていうのは分からずに進んでいきますが重ねの方ではあやっぱりそうなったかっていう形でこう物語が進行していきます。I'm a little confused about this. Because in years past, a game like this, you would have seen just a trailer, like maybe a minute or two of them talking about it, and then that would have been it. But we're almost 10 minutes into this presentation of this one game. ポピュラーで誰しもがその一度は使ってみたいっていう超能力を選定してます。あの本作のそのキーワードとして赤い線っていうものがあるんですけど、あのサスを使った時にその赤いケーブルが背中に刺さってその戦うことができます。のそうですね。あのサスケーブルデザインするときにそのまあそうですね。見た人のその印象に残ってインパクトに残したいところはまずあったんですよね。でそういった時見た時にあのまあ過去タイトル見た時に例えばキングゲーナーの,その刺さってるケーブルだったりとかあとはそうですねあの、like、there's a lot of a quick time events on this game. ケーブルが刺さって戦う様ってところがすごくクールだったので、まあ、そのあたりはそのインスパイアされながらその時代っていうものを進めていきたいと思います。Really like kind of はい、あの本作ですねあの年次期で戦うんですけど、ああの、like、のあの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、And then all of a sudden, like, oh, press this button. And it's like, I just want to punch it. I, mean, I just want to press X when you tell me to just press X.
の中から水を出してその貝に貝を水浸しにしてますでその後そのまあ早数の放電で戦うことで水浸しになったその貝を電気でしびれさせるということもできるのでそのまあ超能力粘力とその早数を組み合わせて戦うというところがまあ一つ特徴となっておりますまあしっかり遊びたい人もそのカジュアルに遊びたい人もまあ幅広く楽しめるものとなっておりますはいあのプレイヤーはですねあのまあこのようにあのブレインフィールドっていうねその特別な必殺技を使うことができますこれはですねあの海抜群が使うことができる近畿の技で非常に強力なんですけど同時に非常に危険な技でもありますあのユーと重ねがあの展開することでそのまあオブジェクトがその空間内に浮き上がってその念力は使い放題になるんですけど一方でその非常に強い負荷が脳にかかってしまいますねなのであのまあ自分の言動がちょっとおかしなことを言ってしまったりとかあとは聞こえないなあのノイズのノイズのような幻聴が聞こえたりとかあとせずこのようにその途中で頭抱えて動けなくなったりとかそういうことがありますで加えてですねあのこの残り時間の秒数があるんですけどこれが制限時間が過ぎるとあのゲームオーバーになってしまうっていう非常に危険な技になっておりますはいなんだけどその非常に危険な技なんですけどそれをうまく使いこなして戦う自分がかっこいいっていう風な思いをプレイヤーに感じ取ってもらいたいなと思っておりますあとそのブレインフィールドあの発動したらフードをかぶってそのたくさんケーブルが刺さった異様な姿になるかなと思うんですけどこれもその、まあ、ダークヒーローっぽいかっこよさがその、まあ、すごく危険な超能力を自分が扱って戦ってるってところを感じ取ってもらいたくてこのようなデザインにしております、はい、あのこちらのレイマップと呼ばれるシステムになりますねあのこちらはの<笑>、まあ、プレイヤーが成長するスキルツリーとなっておりますあのこのようにそのちょっとその脳みその形をデザインしたツリーを意識して作ってますでそのまあ今チャージがため攻撃ができるようになりましたねあのこのようにその、まあ、能力を拡張してその新たなアクションまあこの映像の中ではため攻撃で範囲攻撃をできるようになってるんですけどまあそういったそのアクションの拡張だけじゃなくてそのまあ念力ゲージが増加する強化系のスキルだったりとかあとはアイテムを使用した後のそのクールタイムが短くなるような補助スキルとかあのまあさまざまないくつかのカテゴリーのスキルを習得することができるようになっています。でその、まあ、脳みそをその脳神経を拡張していくようなあのデザインにこだわっててそのまあスキルを選択してボタンをホールドすることでそのまあ神経が伸びていってそのどんどんどんどんその脳神経が拡張していくようなそういうその体験になることを意識してデザインしています。はい、あのブレインマップ以外ですと、like、基本的にレベルアップでその適当な形で経験値を積むことで、最初のレベルアップでパラメータが増加されるということに加えて、あの仲間との絆ですね。仲間と絆形成することで、その絆の力が強くなると絆レベルというものが上がって、そのまあ、仲間から買い受ける超能力っていうものが強力になってきます。まあ、そのブレインマップと通常のレベルとあとはその。仲間との絆を形成して成長させるってところがこの3つがこのゲームのその成長システムになっておりますあのー、このゲームその武器と念力の流れる流れるようなコンビネーションってところが一つ特徴にしてるんですけどまあその流れるようなコンビネーションの体験ってところがシリーズ X だと 60fps で滑らかに体験できるのでその部分はすごくそのリッチな体験になってるなっていうふうに感じますはいあのー開発チーム一同ね、あのまあ、スタッフ個々が全力で携わったタイトルですので、あのぜひ楽しみにしていただけると嬉しいです。From my team and I, please enjoy Scarlet Nexus. That's it. That was an abrupt ending. <laughs> Um, Xbox Extended Games Showcase 2021. I think that's what they called it. And it was a lot longer than I thought it would be. I mean, it was a two hour long event、um, where they talked about every single game that they pretty much showed off at E3 and then some because they had this Scarlet. Nexus game, or whatever it's called, and that was a long look at this game coming 
I don't I don't even know when it's coming out because they gave so much information <laughs> that I have no clue when this game is coming out. But it's coming out at some point. It was about 10 minutes long presentation on just one game. But we got a lot of more inf information on other games. So we got new information on Grounded. We got new information on the Anacrucis. We got new information on Psychonauts 2. If you didn't know about Psychonauts 2, there's a lot of information on Psychonauts 2, what the game is about. It talks a little bit about the original game as well. The Anacrucis is going to be a little bit like Left 4 Dead. But instead of fighting zombies, you're going to be fighting aliens. It's going to be coming out for Xbox Game Pass. It looked like an interesting game. I, if you saw the trailer at Ubisoft, we really didn't know much about it. But now we have all this information about it. It's going The aliens are going to be controlled via AI. The amount of aliens that come to attack you are going to be controlled by the AI and how you play the game. They didn't really give much information on the stories, but it's going to be a team-based game, four players at a time, and they do expect you to stay together with your team the whole time you're playing the game. Um, let's see what else was there. We got information on Flight Simulator that's going to be coming to consoles and that seems to be a lot of fun they have fixed no, not fixed but changed the AI in a way where it's going to be more helpful as, as you play it so you don't have to be scared of playing the game they're adding a lot of um, interest points coming from the using it looks like they're using Bing for that which is Microsoft's search engine and so you're going to have landmarks and cities and things like that that are going to be pinpointed for you so if you just want to get in the plane and travel around and look around you can do that without having to actually fly the plane you can tell the plane to take you to a specific spot and it'll take you there and you can just look out the window while you're flying so that's uh, the other thing that they talked about. Um, kind of taking a look here at everything. Stalker 2. Also, we got more information on that. It's going to be coming out next year for Xbox. It's uh, Game Pass as well. So if you're, if you're interested on the Stalker game, that's coming out. Uh... We got some more information on Forza Horizon 5. So Forza Horizon 5, as we, as you know, is going to be coming out in November. It's going to have all this high-tech stuff in it. It's, again, being confirmed that it's not going to have uh, ray tracing while you play the game. The ray tracing is only going to be available during photo mode. So if you were hoping to have ray tracing as you're racing around, it's not going to happen. You will have 4K 30 frames per second. And if you want to do 60, you can go into performance mode. And then Battlefield 2042, we have more information about Battlefield 2042, which I was not expecting at all. They went a little deeper into what the gameplay is going to be like. They showed us a little more things about the game and they talked about some of the maps a little more. And it just looks like Battlefield 2042 is going to be this crazy chaotic war battle feeling more than any other previous battlefield games they kind of co said that it was going to be battlefielder than any other battlefield pretty much <laughs> um you're not going to have a wingsuit that's the one thing that i think was an important thing that you're not going to have a wingsuit with every single character that you play or as i call them specialists the wingsuit is only going to be available for one specific specialist. So you're going to have to have the specialist to have the wingsuit if you want to do those acrobatics that they show when you drop off buildings in the trailer. So that's something to keep in mind. EA is going to have uh, their own event on the 22nd. So we can look out for more information on the 22nd. I will be here doing the stream on the 22nd. That's Tuesday of next week. I will have the information up uh, ready to go. Um, on the channel so you can look out for that and then we had more information on uh, halo halo infinite multiplayer 
more info. I don't think they really gave us more information than we had before. They did a mini breakdown of the uh, multiplayer trailer, but I don't think there was much more information than what we heard before. If you want more information, you can go to my video on the multiplayer overview breakdown that I did a couple of days ago. I will have that in the description section. All right, this video is super long already. The event went two hours, which I did not expect it to go for two hours. But that's because they went over a lot of games, and that's because Xbox has a lot of games coming out, so they have to talk. They have a lot to talk about, so they packed a lot of information into this presentation. So that's it for me. If you were a part of the live stream, thank you very much for being a part of the live stream. If you're watching this video later, thank you very much for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Give us a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. Subscribe, not subscribe, subscribe to the channel. <laughs> And uh, go ahead and, as always, hit that bell so you can be alerted when we have new videos. And I want to thank you very much for being a part of this live stream, watching my videos, and all that jazz. So, thank you very much for watching whatever time of the day it is that you're watching this. Have a good rest of your evening. Bye.